<laughs> so James, um, he manages the space co-working down at Nubo. If you haven't used that, look into it. It's a great space. Empower, um, we used his space to do our My Business Matter campaigns videos with Freddie Vong. Um, great space to be. He is also the owner of Apex Branding and Design. And I won't take up any more time. James is already on the screen and we'll give this take two. Awesome. It's okay because I was struggling to uh, fill a whole hour. So um, it helps that we just wasted the first 10 minutes and then uh, now my presentation will be a full hour long. So <laughs> everything works out in the end. Um, Let's see, starting back from the beginning. So like she said, I'm James. Um, I do own a co-working space in Cedar Rapids. Um, that that co-working space was probably my first real experience with um, a branding project. I took it over from uh, a previous owner and then I rebranded the whole thing. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And, um, and then I do own Apex Branding and Design, which is a branding and design agency of sorts. Um, I don't have any employees. I hire um, other professional contractors to do various things. Um, like she mentioned, Freddie Bong, he's he's really good with video work. Devin does great design work. Um, so we we help uh, businesses develop their brands. Um, so this is a marketing boot camp. So the um, the conversation is going to. Um, revolve around marketing, of course. Um, my goal is not to try to pit marketing versus branding and try to try to convince you that these are two separate things. I'm not here to try to tell you that branding is better or more important than marketing. Um, I'm here to actually tell you that um, you know marketing and branding uh, they they need to go hand in hand. They you can't really if you want to be as successful as possible, you can't have marketing without branding. You can't have branding without marketing. Okay. Um, it's not an either or this is not a versus thing. This is a um, how to bring the two together to make your business as successful as possible. Um, I believe that that the best marketers, whether they know it or not, the best marketers are full of brand strategy. Even if they've never used the term brand strategy before, if they don't think about the word brand in their head, um, you know, the best marketers out there are the ones who are um, thinking about, you know, brand strategy, um, you know, the voice of the company, the, the values, the culture, things like that. So um, that's the goal of this presentation um, is to convince you of the importance of branding. You've probably heard a lot of people talking about marketing. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, branding today. So. First things first, um, Faith, if you could bring up the slide deck. Awesome, thank you. So first things first, what even is marketing? So you've heard some some pretty cool talks today from Maurice, Kendra, um, Schladaski. <laughs> I think I said that right. Um, and, uh, and you've probably heard a lot of people, you know, define marketing in the past. I know I have, in fact, um, when trying to define marketing for this presentation, I actually crowdsourced it, went to LinkedIn, asked people to um, share what they, you know, what their definition of marketing is. Um, and so I'm going to share with you some of those responses. Um, so these people said that marketing is communicating a product's value. Uh, marketing is how you're putting your product on the market for people to buy. Uh, it's a multi-stage process in which an entity introduces themselves to people with the intent of enticing them to do something that benefits the entity. Um, that's a that's a mouthful, but there's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, calling on your audience to answer a question they have already been asking themselves. Uh, one guy offered an idea of what marketing isn't. He said marketing is not guessing what your customer is interested in without actually talking to your customer. So he's saying that, you know, Marketing should involve some uh, some research um, and the process of planning a combination of efforts designed to lead a person, thought or action from one place to the next. So these are some really great definitions that I got from various people on LinkedIn. And what I try to do is I try to take one word or idea from each of these definitions um, to try to come up with sort of one, you know, succinct definition. Um, 
all-inclusive definition of, of marketing. Um, and this is what I, <laughs> Maurice, Maurice likes the last one. I wonder why, I wonder why that is. Um, this is what I came up with. Um, marketing is educated communication directed at a specific audience, which leads that audience to a desired action. And so I highlighted the uh, words in yellow there that I feel um, are, are important. Um, I feel that these words are what separates marketing from good marketing, okay? Because I think at the end of the day, you, uh, you could say the marketing is just communicating something to somebody. Um, you know, one person telling another person about something. That's marketing. Um, it's, you know, and there's effective forms of that and there's ineffective forms of that, right? We see it all the time. A lot of the marketing that we see today, unfortunately, is just people talking to other people and hoping that something good comes from it. There's no, you know, research, there's no intention. Um, it's just people sort of, sort of talking. And so, um, so these, these four words that I've highlighted there, um, I believe are what set, sets marketing apart from good marketing. I think your marketing should be educated, uh, meaning you should be doing your research. Um, you need to know what you're saying and you need to know who you're saying it to. Um, your communication should be directed towards a specific audience, meaning you're not just blasting your marketing material and your advertisements out to the whole world. That's a waste of time and money. You should be directing it towards people who are more likely to buy your product. You get more bang for your marketing buck that way. Um, and you should there should be some intention behind your marketing. You should be leading that specific audience to do something, whether it's to buy something from you or whether it's to sign up for your newsletter. Uh, maybe you're just trying to get the people that you're marketing to to think about something or feel a certain way. Um, you know, there's a there's a book by uh, Gary V. I'm sure you've heard of him, Gary Vaynerchuk, um, called Jab 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 Right Hook, um, and the idea behind that is. That's that should be the strategy for your marketing, your advertising, uh, meaning a jab is is sort of it's not a super salesy post. It's just sort of an educational post or informational post, an entertaining post. It's some sort of content that your audience will like. They'll enjoy it. They'll learn something, but it's not necessarily like an ask. You're not asking them to buy. And so you jab them three times and then you give them the right hook and the right hook is the sales pitch. It's the hey. You know, if you're interested, click here to, to buy um, rather than trying to do a call to, to action. Every single thing you you put out there, you know, on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever. Um, and so. Um, and so that's uh, that's the jab, 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 right hook philosophy uh, of marketing. So if that is what marketing is, um, what is branding then? So. When I think of what branding is, you know, there's a lot of names that come to mind. I've read a lot of books. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos um, from branding experts and brand strategists, and I've heard a lot of definitions. Um, the The biggest, most popular definition floating around the, the universe, it comes from a guy by the name of Marty Neumeier, who is sort of the OG of branding. Um, he's been doing branding since before I was born. He was doing branding before people were calling it branding. And he um, there's some really great videos uh, of him talking about about what branding is um, and what your brand is. And according to Marty Neumeier, your brand is not a logo. It's not your product. It's not a promise. Um, your brand is a person's gut feeling about your business product or service, uh, which is very interesting. You know, you'll notice that your brand is not a tangible thing. It's not a deliverable. It's not something that you can buy from someone. You can't pay someone to make your brand for you. And then they email it to you. Hey, here's your brand. You know, I'll send you the invoice. Your brand is an intangible thing. It's like an idea. It's a, it's it, it, like Marty says, it's a gut feeling. When a, when a person sees your logo or they see your product or they hear your business name, they get sort of a gut feeling right away. And that gut feeling is your brand. And so if that's what a brand is, then branding um, is the act of influencing that gut feeling. Okay, so you can't you can't control uh, your brand. Or you can't control how people feel about you, but you can influence it. And the more effort you put into influencing your brand, then the closer you're going you're to get to people feeling 
about you the way you want them to feel about you. Okay. That's basically when you have a bad brand, that's when you have a feeling about your business and then you find out that your customers feel a different way. That's not a good thing. Uh, that's, that's, that means it's time for a rebrand. You need to, you need to focus a little bit. Um, and I would say if there's, if you take away one thing from this whole presentation, you take away nothing else but this, you need to understand that you have a brand, whether you believe it or not. Okay. Um, you, your business has a brand, whether you've tried to build it, whether you've put any sort of effort into developing it, whether you think you have a brand or not, you do. Okay. Um, it might be a good brand. It might be a bad brand, uh, but it's there. When people see you and they hear about you, they feel a certain way. Okay, so why not put some effort into influencing that brand and influencing how people think about you, right? It's so much easier to, you know, it's very hard to change a direction of the of that ship once it's already sailed, right? It's much better to get the ship pointing in the right direction before it takes off rather than finding out five years into your business that you need to, to rebrand. Um. So who here likes sales funnels, right? It's marketing. We can't have a marketing boot camp without somebody blathering on about sales funnels for five minutes. Um, so I'm going to try to put the fun in funnel. Um, this really isn't going to be all that fun. I just like to play on the word funnel. Uh, but this is going to be a very basic sales funnel. I'm not going to get into, um, you know, there's a lot of really complex sales funnel workshops out there. Um, and any business is probably going to have more than one sales funnel and there's going to be sales funnels inside sales funnels. This is just a very basic one that I'm going to use to illustrate um, kind of how you can use branding to really ramp up the effectiveness of your marketing. Maurice loves sales funnels. Of course he does. Um, so the first sort of step of your sales funnel, and it's not these people aren't even in your funnel yet. This is your audience, right? These are people who are out there and they might buy your product someday. Um, but right now they don't even know you exist yet. Okay. Um, they're just out there. Maybe they're, they're browsing Facebook or they're about to do a Google search or something because they need or want some kind of product or service. Um, so they're out there, uh, but they don't know yet that you exist. And then you do some marketing. You put out an advertising, you, do a paid ad on Facebook or Pinterest. Uh, maybe you hand out flyers, you're sticking things on people's windshield um, in parking lots, whatever you're doing, you're, you're doing some sort of advertising and some people in your audience see that advertisement. Not all of them, of course. Um, you know, we all have limited marketing budgets. It'd be nice if we could somehow make it so every single person in our target audience sees our ad, but it's, it's very unlikely that we have uh, the budget to do that. So some fraction of the people that you would love to buy from you are going to see the advertisements that you put out there. And then some fraction of the people who see your advertisement are going to act on it. If it's a digital ad on the computer, some fraction of those people are going to click on that ad. Not all of them, but some of them. If you're handing out flyers, maybe you have a brick and mortar store somewhere. Somebody sees your flyer. Some of those people who get your flyer are going to go to your place of business. Not all of them but some of them. And then some of those people who visit your website or visit your store in person are going to convert. They're going to buy something from you or they're going to sign up for your newsletter or whatever it is that you're, you're trying to get them to do with this particular advertising campaign. Right. So this is a pretty basic, pretty standard sales funnel. Um, it's called a funnel and it's shaped like this because, you know, a lot of people come in the top of the funnel and you lose people at every step, every single step of your whole sales process, you lose people until you get to the very end of your sales process where you get some sales. OK, and, you know, you can you can do some Google searches to see what are some good percentages. You know, if you get a thousand people in the top of your funnel, how many sales did you get? Well, that's different, you know, for every industry and, and whatnot. But there are some numbers out there to give you kind of a decent idea to tell you how you're doing. Um, and it's, it's also nice if you can track each step so you know where the most people are dropping off. You know, if you get a lot of people clicking on your ad um, and they go to your website, but almost nobody ever buys from you, that tells you that the problem probably isn't with your ad. It's probably with your website, right? Um, flip it around. If not very many people click on your ad, but the ones that do purchase, 
then you know maybe your website's fine but you need to to work on your your advertising and and make it a little more enticing so this like i said this is a basic simple sales funnel and um you know there are things that you can do of course at each step to improve but i think the most important thing you can do to make sure you get the most sales at the end is to start from the beginning i think if you have a strong uh start at the top of your funnel then you're gonna you're gonna lose fewer people at each step what i mean by that is basically if you are getting the right people in the top of your funnel then you're going to get more sales per lead okay a lot of marketers make the mistake of of their goal is to just get as many people in the top of the funnel as possible and ideally sure i mean the more people on the top the more people are, are going to come out the bottom but what i think is more important than the quantity of people that you're putting in the top of your funnel is the quality of the people and i don't mean you know you're looking for good people not trash people i mean quality of the leads how likely are these people to buy from you okay if you're wasting a lot of marketing dollars you know there's one time i took over a google adwords campaign for a company this company sells like conveyor belt parts and like rubber manufacturing parts and whatnot um and i got into their google adwords campaign and i saw you can see where your ads are showing up and what kind of websites your ads are showing up on and their ads were showing up on websites that were selling like toys for little girls like barbies and stuff and so that's a waste of marketing dollars because you know some 12 year old girl doing a google search for barbies and they come across some toy website selling little toys and then they see an ad for conveyor belt parts you know <laughs> the, the conveyor belt company paid for that ad to show up there but that little girl's not going to buy a conveyor belt part from them right so that's that's an example of yeah they got a lot of people in the top of the funnel but they weren't they weren't the right people and so they weren't getting they weren't getting sales out of those people so um you know your your brand is a huge part of making sure you get the right people in the top of the funnel when you know what your business's personality is when you know what your business's voice is uh, your your vibe you've probably heard the term your vibe attracts your tribe uh that is that's basically like branding 101 that's what branding is it's 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 developing the right vibe so that you attract the right tribe right i like to say that um you know advertising is pushing your products onto people and branding is is drawing people towards your product right advertising can get you quick sales right now you can put out an ad and you can track the roi you can say i spent a thousand dollars on ads and i made two thousand dollars of sales whatever um but traditionally that kind of advertising if you stop doing that you, the sales stop right the second you turn off those ads the sales stop if you develop your brand effectively uh what that does is that gets you repeat customers that gets you loyal customers all right it gets you customers that maybe they came to you because of the advertisement but because they vibe with your brand they they stay and they will make another purchase even if they never see an ad from you ever again they're still going to come back and they're still going to pur purchase from you right um there's been a lot of of studies around how people are buying things um how people are making decisions when it comes to buying things and it, it's changed a lot over the last 50 plus years right you know back in the day um first of all there were there weren't nearly as many options you know 50 plus years ago as there are today so if you needed a thing there's a good chance there was only one or two companies even making it so you didn't have to waste a bunch of time trying to figure out you know who you're going to buy from um and then you fast forward to today and the market is crazy it's it's so much easier to bring products to market than it used to be that for pretty much any sort of product or service that you want you have a lot of options to choose from and a lot of the options as far as the product goes are the same okay um and so consumers need another way of making these decisions how you know am i going to buy this product from this company or that company and you look at the product and they're basically the same thing so how do they make that choice well one thing you could do is you know a lot of companies will try to be the cheapest option and that's you know there are certain people who are looking for that they they just want the cheapest option out there 
but there's a lot of other people who aren't looking for the cheapest option and they need something else. Your brand, your business needs another way to stand out besides price. I like, I heard somebody say on LinkedIn one time, I forget who it was, um, only one company can be the cheapest. All the other brands need to find some other way to stand out. Um, so your, your branding is your best way to, to stand out in a very crowded market, right? There's so many examples out there um, of companies who have developed great brands. Of course, Apple is probably the most talked about. They have the most amazing customer loyalty of any company that has ever existed. Uh, Patagonia is a great brand. Um, and one thing you, you'll start to notice, Nike is another very popular brand. One thing that you'll notice about these companies that have really great brands, they're also usually, they're almost never inexpensive, right? Apple, Nike, Patagonia, they're all expensive. They're the, they're the, the top tier expensive brands in their market and their customers are loyal. We've seen the lines, we've all seen the lines of people waiting for days to buy the new iPhone, right? And that's because it's not because of the iPhone, right? The iPhone, if you break it down, isn't really any better than a top tier Google Pixel or Samsung phone. They all have really great processors. They all have really great RAM, really crisp, great screens, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's the brand. People are lining up for that Apple brand. And so, you know, Apple's sales funnels <laughs> must be fantastic. I mean, it's, when you, I believe that when you really nail down your branding and your marketing is intentional and it's educated, you can turn your sales funnel into a little bit more of a sales cylinder. It's always going to be a funnel. You're always going to lose some people at each step, but you can lose fewer and fewer people at each step if you're intentional and if you're authentic. Um, one thing that people really resonate with is an authentic brand. They don't like fake brands, right? I mentioned on LinkedIn the other day, um, Patagonia. Uh, Patagonia, they're known for caring about environmental sustainability and they put their money where their mouth is. They made a ton of money over Black Friday, like $10 million or something. And they donated it all to um, organizations that help, you know, with environmental sustainability. So that, it doesn't get much more authentic than that, right? Patagonia is clearly not just out there virtue signaling. They just they just gave up ten million dollars to do what they they tell you that they believe in. And so when you see stuff like that, you you think, wow, these guys really mean it when they say that they care about environmental sustainability. So all the other people in the world who also care about environmental sustainability are going to be so much more likely to purchase from Patagonia, even though Patagonia is one of the most expensive options on the market. Um, so that's, you know, that's sort of my, um, my pitch for why I think, uh, it's important to focus on your brand. Don't just focus on your product. When's the last time you saw a commercial from Apple geeking out about the specs on their phones, right? They don't do that because they know their consumers don't care. Their consumers care about, um, you know, what kind of, what does it mean about me? if I buy this product? What does that say about me? What kind of tribe am I joining? What kind of community am I becoming a part of when I buy this product? Um, that's that's something that consumers care about way more than they used to. I think they just did a study that like 80% of millennials basically just don't trust traditional advertising, right? So like you see a commercial on TV because you just know, you see you're like, that's just a paid actor saying whatever they're being told to say about the product. You don't even know if the, the person's ever even used the product, right? We just don't resonate with that kind of advertising anymore. We, we care a lot more about the brand uh, than we used to. So if you as a business owner don't care about your brand, you are likely um, missing out. You're, you're leaving money on the table. You're wasting marketing dollars. It could be a lot more effective. Um, so as far as actual tangible you know, next steps. Um, it's hard to, it's hard to go into that on, in such a short presentation, you know, a, a good branding workshop is going to be like eight hours long and it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one because every business is different. Um, but there are some sort of highlights that, that I can share with you, um, that you should be thinking about as you're going about your, your daily business tasks. 
regardless of where you are in the business, whether you're the owner, your marketing, your HR, whatever, um, you should be thinking about the company's brand. And then um, I'll share some resources at the end as well, because like I said, branding is something that never stops. You should never stop learning about, about branding and how to effectively develop your brand. So I'll share some really great resources um, with you at the end. So if you are starting a business or even if you've, you've been in business for five or 10 years already, that's fine. It's never too late to start thinking about your brand. Okay. So ideally you'd start thinking about it from day one, but I understand that most people in here have probably already started a business. So day one was a long time ago. That's okay. It's never too late to start thinking about it. Um, the first thing you want to do is think about your brand foundation. Uh, like most things, you need a good, strong foundation to build upon. Um, you need to be thinking about, you know, what is your business or your company's mission? What is your vision for the company? What are your goals uh, as a company? Um, try to define, you know, the why, the how, the what and who. So what is it you're doing? Why are you doing it? How do you do it? Who are you doing it for? Um, and and write these things down, you know. It's, it's good to write these things out and it's, and it's good to communicate these things with the rest of your team, right? Your brand is not just the responsibility of the owner or the CEO. Uh, you really need your whole team, whether you're a team of five or a team of a thousand, you all need to be on the same page uh, as far as your company's brand goes. Um, and then you want to start thinking about what is your brand's personality? Okay. Um, and you might be thinking, how can a company have a personality? Well, go look at the fast food chain Wendy's Twitter. If you want to see an example of a company with a personality, uh, <laughs> Wendy's has a personality and the personality is snarky and it's hilarious and I love it. I hate their food, but their Twitter account is hilarious. Um, you need to think about what is your brand's personality? What are your values? What's your culture like? Um, what are the attributes, benefits of your, your brand? Uh, what's your brand's tone of voice? Um, you know, and and don't focus so much on the visual traits yet. Um, that's you know, that's like like Marty Neumeyer said before, your brand is not your logo, right? Your logo is just one tiny little piece of your brand, um, just like your website is one tiny little piece of your brand. Uh, your target audience is, and research. This is very important. You need to figure out who you should be researching. Um, use interviews, observation, study surveys. Um, you can crowdsource this. I mean, you can go to Facebook, you can go to Reddit. I think there's just a, there's a subreddit devoted to crowdsourcing. Um, you can offer a little gift. I mean, it, you'd be amazed how many responses you can get to a survey if you offer like a $5 gift card to one lucky winner. Um, you get some information. You can get information before you've launched a product. You can get information after you've launched a product. Your current customers are a great source of information. Uh, as well as your non-customers, uh, people who, if there's, if you can figure this out, people who have seen your ad or maybe interacted with you in some way, but haven't made a purchase yet, that's a great source for information. You know, don't be afraid to say, Hey, why didn't you buy? Um, you know, what was it about the product or the brand that, that made you decide not to purchase? Um, and then try to use all this information to create some customer avatars like, uh, Maurice talked about earlier today. Um, that's very important customer avatars to sort of help you, you know, it puts a visual in your mind. Whenever you're doing anything, you're coming up with a new product or you're coming up with a marketing campaign. It's good to have an idea in your mind of like a person. So when you're sitting there writing your ad copy, you imagine that you're writing it to, you know, the customer avatars that you created. Um, and that helps you stay on brand. That helps keep your, your advertisements and your marketing on brand. Um, when you have those customer avatars defined, it's good to have a customer avatar that rec that represents your current customers. And it's good to have a customer avatar that represents your ideal customer because they're not always the same. Um, you know, a lot of times you come up with a product and you start selling it and you get some customers and you're just like, man, these aren't the people that I really am looking for. Um, and that's okay. Um, but define that, define who your ideal customer is so that when you're marketing, uh, you can target those people and you can keep those people in mind. And then you need to do a gap analysis. Some people call this a competitive analysis. Um, you know, you should be comparing your business to itself um, in the future. You know, look at look at what your business is like now and imagine what you want your business to be like five years later. 
are they different? Is it pretty close? What kind of work needs to be done to get to get you to where you, you'd like to be? Uh, and compare yourself to other businesses. You know, um, one of the best things you can do is go to your competitor's website or Facebook, whatever, look at the reviews and go look at the bad ones. Find out what it is that people don't like about your competitor. You know, is there some is there some sort of trend? Is there is there just some feature that they're not offering that that people want? That could be a really good way for you to stand out in that market by offering whatever that is that people are looking for. Um, and and look at the good reviews too. What is it about your competitors that people love? Um, those are both very important things to know. And then try to come up with the value proposition um, and a positioning statement for your business. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it, I believe. Um, and I could talk pretty much all day about this, but I'm trying not to ramble too much today. Um, I did promise some resources here and I noticed that one of them isn't showing up on this slide because I, uh, I don't know, I made a change after I added it to, <laughs> to, uh, the streaming service. So that's fine. Um, so the first resource here is called Finian. If you just go to Finian.com, Finian is the agency run by um, a guy named Fabian Geierhalter. I love this guy. Um, I do um, a couple Zoom calls, uh, group Zoom calls with him every month. Um, and it's just fascinating. Um, and I follow him on LinkedIn. I highly recommend uh, following him as Fabian Geierhalter. Um, but Finian.com is his website where, where he... Um, offers a lot of resources. Um, I would check out a couple of his books. Um, one of them is um, How to Launch a Brand. That's the number one Amazon bestseller. Uh, that's a really great book. And then he has some free white papers too that are actually really helpful, especially for a new uh, young brand. Um, the white papers can help you um, to launch your, your new business. Um, and then the future.com is a website run by a guy named Chris Doe. I found him on YouTube. Um, he's a, he's a, was a designer and then he, he, uh, got into brand strategy and now he's basically in, he just educates people. His whole life now is YouTube videos and workshops where he's trying to help people be successful business owners, um, typically designers, but also, you know, any, anybody in the sort of, um, uh, branding sphere, um, he's there to help out. So definitely check out his YouTube channel for sure. Cause that's a ton of really great free content. You'll see videos there of Fabian Geierhalter from Finney and you'll see videos there of Marty Neumeyer, the guy I mentioned earlier and tons of other really great stuff. And then his, his website has some, uh, some really good paid content too, um, that you can download. And then Marty Neumeyer's website, I recommend checking out a couple of his books. He, his books are really short. He did that on purpose. He says that he likes he likes the idea of somebody picking up his book on like a long plane ride and finishing it before they get to their destination. You know, um, it's th these two books are very easy to read the brand gap and then zag. Um, I highly recommend checking out those books. Um, and then the last thing is a little, uh, self promotion here. I do have a podcast. Um, it's sort of on hiatus right now, but we do have seven episodes that are live. I'll put the link there in the chat to that. So if you just want to hear me and my friend, Sarah, uh, rambling on about <laughs> branding and marketing, um, check that out. Our latest two episodes are fantastic because we had a couple of really cool guests on some of you. I think most of you are all, uh, kind of in the Cedar Rapids area. You might know who Eric Engelman is. You might know who Steve Schreiber is. Those guys are, um, just giants in the, uh, the local small business community. Um, they had some really great insights on branding, and building a business. So um, I think that's about it for me. You can see it. There's a little link on my slide there to my LinkedIn. I would love it if you guys, you know, come and found me and, and connected with me on LinkedIn. Um, and uh, maybe we can, you know, continue some of this branding conversation um, on LinkedIn. So thanks everybody for coming to my presentation. Hopefully you're all a little bit uh, more full of BS than you were when you started. Thank you, James, for all of that great marketing and branding information. And we'll also gather um, all these resources and send them to you, too, so you don't have to worry about writing everything down. We'll get all this information to you. Um, again, go check out his space at the co-working or use him for your branding if you have the money to do that. Thank you so much, James. Thank you.
All right. And we'll start the next session at 325 and you'll be with me and it'll be quick and short. See you later.